Hello and welcome to the new video. I want to start by saying uh, a big thank you to uh, Games Workshop for sending me the new starter set for uh, 40k. Uh, I think it's called uh, Indomitus. Uh, look, look at all these models. They're incredible. Uh, cool new sculpts. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, okay, you got me. This is just a pile of eBay Necrons that I got for cheap. I promise I've not betrayed all of the indie gamers out there. I still love you. We will return to our regularly scheduled weird games really soon. Please, please do not leave. Some YouTubers, not me, might be inclined to turn this into a video about speed painting. I, however, uh, actually like painting. So I'm not going to be the one to tell you that you should spend less time on your models. I'm actually going to go a step further and make this a slow painting video. We're going to make seven models and that is going to be enough for a first go at... Now, I didn't care much for the Necrons when I started the hobby because they mostly get fairly boring paint jobs and little to no attention in the world of kit bashing, apart from the hot glue guy. But I don't know. I saw a couple cool ones. I like how evocative the idea of undeath is in general. Knowledge is gained through listening. Plus, I've not been able to stop thinking about Book of Travels since I first played it. And the summer vibes got to me. After turning the idea over in my head a million times, I somehow ended up at what I can only call out-of-time ceramic tile core. I always gravitate towards making a hero to start an army. I enjoy how ideas flow from how one individual would fit into the group. What's their deal, you know? How they contrast? from the rest of the force in terms of mood and look. This model is one of the most busted ones in the lot, but these issues are a great way to guide us in the kit bashing process. This is basically a space wizard, right? Well, I decided she was gonna be a botanist. I guess she's trying to find a way to reverse what happened to the necrons by transferring them into trees. So I started by making a little Oyumaru mold to replace the missing and broken legs. I filled the molds with milliput and waited for it to cure. Uh, once that was done, I got some copies of the legs. Uh, that same robot got turned into a giant bonsai pod because that's more interesting than whatever the hell a light bulb was doing. To keep up with the Book of Travels inspiration, I had a little veil to hide the glued up face. The missing hand was replaced by a Sylvaneth one and I changed the staff head because I thought it looked goofy. You might have noticed I just made up some lore here. Uh, I'm going to share a couple of mantras with you about that. Number one, uh, the GW lore is worse than the average like airport paperback. Uh, number two, it is good to make your own story up because it will always annoy the 40k weirdos. And number three, because I need a downer in here, uh, there is so much more to visual arts than storytelling. So don't get trapped by your own narrative. Yeah, I'm saying it. You need to spend more time on your normal dudes. Uh, the squad we're working on is a group of immortals that came unbuilt with a lot. The basic idea is that we're gonna have them wear hats. This was revealed to me in a dream. We have to make a musician. Uh, it is not an option, since 40k is apparently becoming AOSified. Uh, every unit legally requires a musician. This is the first time I'm really doing reposing like this. I get a new sharp blade and cut at the knees and hips. Uh, when in doubt, I follow the old adage, measure zero times and cut once, Lamau. And it works pretty good. I pin the legs in their new position, I glue the whole thing, and re-sculpt the joints. 
It's actually pretty easy and I really like this simple sitting pose, it adds a lot of personality to the model. Naturally, a space skeleton in the year 40,000 would be playing the mandolin, so that's what I'm giving him. Uh, it gets glued to the slightly reposed arm, and now the nightmare truly begins. This thing needs strings. I wanted to make them out of a uh, mystery wire that showed up in my hobby stuff one day. Once I had super glue on the wires, I realized that they were magnetic. And so were my tweezers. So after a long exercise in frustration, all I can say is that super glue is the devil and metal tweezers are stupid and the job is done and we're never talking about this again. Then it's easy, I just put some putty for the body of the mandolin, glue the other arm, uh, which sort of looks like it has a pick in its hand and I'm golden. Now that I spent an entire 10 hours making a single guy, which was probably worth 10 points, I really got it. I entered the slow hobby state of consciousness and decided that there were enough guns in the game already and we might as well give one of our remaining guys a makeover to turn him into a banner bearer. This was a much quicker job. I used copper for the flag string thingy because it holds its shape nicely and again riffed on Book of Travels for the flagpole. I added some dangling cables where the gun would be attached to this guy and the musician, and they were ready. This is the old heavy destroyer, just missing an arm and some clear rods. I gave the model a nice bath in alcohol to strip it and get rid of some of the glue residues. You can still see the paint on my nails from the salvage here. Once again, we go back to the Immortals kit for extra bits. I grab another arm and the rod from one of the unused guns. This time, I tried my hand at making a straw hat like I'd done on one of my previous models, and after some tweaking after curing, it turned out alright. The usual flourishes are applied for style and to hide the ugly, unrefined transitions. Yeah, so while I was writing this video, 10th edition came out and it looks like the rules for the Overlord are really cool and good and I want to make one. The issue is I really don't love the model. So let's start this new one with a base and a little bit of putty. And after what, like 4 or 5 minutes, uh, this is what I got. So yeah, I gave my overlord a sort of biomechanical alien horse that was inspired by the art of Mobius. Honestly, it just sort of happened. I got inspired and I ran with it. I think it's very important sometimes to follow these creative impulses without thinking too much. You might find something interesting at the end of the process. Oh, and also I'm contractually obligated to put a peri horse in every video. This video is about making your army your own, and I don't tend to love the grimdark as much as I love what you can broadly call the new weird. I guess the darkness of grimdark feels to me like it's lost its bite a while ago. I think the world of weird fiction is kind of the natural progression of what was cool and provocative and funny about the Games Workshop brand of grimdark back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, anyway, please leave your mandatory 300 word essays about Thomas Ligeti in the comments of this video. In the last video, I skipped out on the best part of modeling, the basing. People tend to get worked up about needing a bunch of stuff for basing, when really, you mostly just need meal input. The box claims that it takes 3-4 to four hours to cure. Obviously, that's a lie perpetrated by the British demons in order to annoy the Southern Europe sculptors. In reality, the heat causes it to cure much faster, which is both a blessing and a curse. It helps getting multi-layered projects out fast, but only when you know what you're doing, which I really don't. Case in point, the destroyer base. I hate flying stands with a passion. So I wanted to use a normal base with just a metal rod to attach the destroyer. So I got a 60mm base because that's how big the clear thing is. Except 
the GW 60mm bases are not 60mm, they're way larger, so I had to order real 60s and they took forever to show up. I then found out that actually the heavy destroyer does not use the flight stand anymore. Okay, so I'm using two main basing techniques here. First are the handmade cobblestones, very easy, very relaxing. Just add some variation with bits of plastic art and greens of flowers and you've got a solid foundation. Those flowers are made from a piece of the same mystery wire from earlier and a tiny piece of green stuff shaped into a cross that I can then manipulate to look more flowery. The other thing I'm using is this roller. Now I know what you're gonna say, uh, rollers look bad. They leave a sort of like print line like texture, uh, the designs are mostly bad, uh, really uninspired and sometimes nonsensical and so on. Well yes that's true, but this anti grease one has a bit of mosaic and that's very nice and useful when you use it in tandem with other basing tricks. Now for the fun part. I'm making little cairns out of stacked rocks. It's a fun simple way to give the world these minis evolve in more body, let's say. And this is kind of the point of basing in general. It's a background for your figures and it needs to have a dialogue with the minis themselves. In my case I make these and the little human figurines to show traces of civilization. Like the Necrons woke up on a world where civilization had already collapsed ages ago. And they're just finding the remnants of the people who lived here. To blend all these textures together I'm using chinchilla sand which is a very cheap and easy way to have little scale rocks. I follow it up with a layer of baking soda for the finer sand bits. Let's go over the boring parts really quick. I base coat with tan and a steel color, which takes forever because I primed everything black. I then do sponge chipping with a reddish brown over the tan areas. Once that's done, I base coat the white parts, which takes another eternity to do. I throw a wash of Reclaim Flesh Shade over all of these areas and then do some of the gun bits with a black contrast. And that's where I depart from the stock recipe that I'm riffing on. Uh, it's time to get weird. The white areas are actually a canvas for freehanding. This is where the ceramic tile in Out of Time Ceramic Tile Core comes from. We're gonna use blues mostly, with greens and reds peppered in for variation. Flowers, birds, boats, just nice things that remind me of being in an old tiled kitchen in a cool summer evening. Once I'm satisfied with how the freehands look, I go over them with a gloss varnish to really give the appearance of being ceramics. On the hero models, I'm going to do this little mosaic effect that I saw painted by Fancy Kelvin over on Instagram. It's a really cool effect that gives a lot of character to the model, and it's very relaxing to paint. Blue and ice yellow mixes. Easy. Speaking of ice yellow, I'm gonna mix a little of it with my tan and throw some highlights around the models. Mostly doing it in dot patterns because that creates interesting texture. Then it's time for the oil wash. I use dioxazine purple from Sennelier and dilute it with white spirit. I want it to stay in the lower parts of each limb, but I don't really mind if it stains or if it spills over, honestly. After a bit, I remove a bunch of the extra wash with a brush damped in spirits. You can go back and forth and that's what I did. I added a little, removed a little until I was happy with the shadows. Colored shadows and highlights, like I'm doing here, are a fairly simple concept, but they add a lot to the mood of your miniatures. Well yeah, you guessed it, this is the going to the museum part of the video. On this episode, we're gonna look at a John Singer Sargent watercolor. Corfu Light and Shadows feels like it's radiating sunlight. The simple white building, 
becomes a prism that gives the scene such an incredible presence just by the way light bounces off of it. The illuminated walls vary between a warm tan and a pale yellow. The shadows move through lavender, greens, browns and oranges. There is so much to Singer's understanding of color and light and I'm not formally trained enough to rip him off effectively. But I can stop and think about why I love his work so much and try to lift techniques from his pieces. And this project is a result of that. To try and paint in a way that I find enchanting and to let go of the iron grip of realism. Back to painting, I'm gonna add some quick glow effects with white, purple and a fluorescent blue. It's nothing too hard, just a lazy gradient with some washes because I like it. And yeah, now I'm just coasting. I've got my recipe, I got room on each model for self-expression, I got some iced tea and the TV is showing Star Trek reruns as I paint these little guys. And that's kind of it! Here they are, hanging out. I like them. Which is good because I have a lot more to make. I don't know if or when I'll play 40k with them, but they'll be a cool base for a warband in an indie game, like, I don't know, a sci-fi hack of Necropolis 28, or something along these lines. And uh, yeah, I, I wanted to say uh, thank you for the reception of the previous video. Um, I was very happy uh, that everyone liked it. If you uh, would like to follow me on Instagram, I post uh, more projects on there. Uh, thank you. I'll see you in the next one where I will remake Wong Bing's magnum opus documentary West of the Tracks in stop motion with uh, Space Marines. We live in the